Um, hey, so it's Molly again, um, and here's Reed, he's kind of hiding in the corner, but he's here. Um, I want to talk about today uh, the stigma that comes along with um, with the type of seizures that I have, uh, psychogenic non-epileptic seizures, PNES, um, and the kind of treatment that I got from the medical field and maybe why I got that treatment and what can be done to make it better. So I, if you saw my last video, I got diagnosed a little over a year ago. Now, I started having my seizures a year and three months ago, something like that. And um, when they started, we really didn't know what it was. We, I was kind of going in and out of the hospital. We were, you know, going back. Is it epilepsy? Is it conversion disorder? This, that. Um, there are many names for PNES. Um, the current one is PNES. They used to be called pseudo seizures, which is, you know, basically a way of saying fake seizures not real seizures. It was still used for me a few times by a few doctors. Um, when I was going in now the hospital, I mean, first of all, I didn't understand what was going on, so that was already hard enough on me. Um, and then it was another layer that made things hard when I had a lot of doctors that were not always very understanding of my situation and very pleasant with me. and didn't act the way they should have, um, and, you know, I'm not going to go into the details of how I was treated particularly, because, I mean, ultimately there's no point. I had some bad treatment, um, I know other people in the community with my type of seizures who have had bad treatment, and, I mean, I still hold a lot of anger towards the medical community, especially towards ER doctors because of it. Um, but I think really what it is, it's not, it's not that all emergency rooms are filled with horrible people. It's not that all ER doctors are idiots that don't know anything and all this. I think it's just that there's a lack of education about the topic, a lack of understanding. And also, emergency room doctors have to deal with a lot of shit, a lot of time. Um, for every patient like me that is a legit patient with real seizures, even though they're not epileptic, but real seizures, there's going to be another patient out there who's going to come into the ER pretending to have whatever symptoms to get some to get drugs to get this to get that and it's it's terrible that that people that are really sick have to suffer from that but it happens and i mean it's it's no one's fault i mean i as much as i wish i could blame the doctors for all the terrible things that have happened, it's not always their fault. And in retrospect, I haven't always been the best patient. It's it's very easy for me to, as soon as I feel a little bit of, as soon as I get a hint of them, well that fell. Sorry about that. Um, geez. Um, as soon as I get a little bit of hint of um, any type of anything that I feel isn't, you know, going to go my way, something that may be a little stigmatized towards me, I get very, very harsh on the topic. I get very, you know, confrontational. And that doesn't help my case. Um, and the fact is, PNES presents differently in so many ways that, you know, there is no book 
on here are all the symptoms of PNES because, I mean, hell, in the year that I've had it, my symptoms have, ch like, changed I don't know how many times. Um, I mean, I've had, I went through, like, maybe a month period where after each seizure I would just fall asleep for hours without waking up. And that lasted maybe a month. Um, and actually when that happened, um, three times because of that, I was brought into the ER and the doctors were kind of like, what the hell is happening here? Like, why is she just sleeping? And ultimately I was just kind of put in the ER room and left sleeping there until I woke up and then I was sent home. That was pretty much all they could do. Um, then I've had other times where my seizures were you know, triggered by different things occasionally, you know, I went through a time where the, um, the sound of the, the car blinker would trigger a seizure, but I, then that passed and not all anymore. Um, my seizures started changing in the way they looked, you know, sometimes my entire body would convulse, sometimes it would just be this hand, sometimes the hand would be more like this motion. Sometimes it would be like that motion. You know, it's... I can understand why... I really can understand why sometimes I kind of got told in a way that I was faking it. Because, I mean, obviously even though they, they should know, they, there should be better education on PNES. There should be, but there isn't. And be at the point we are right now, because of the lack of education, it's understandable the way I was treated. It's not right, but it's understandable. I hope that's clear what I'm saying. I don't think it's... There's no point in, in staying angry that's not gonna advance anything. It's not going to help anyone. It's not going to help me. It's not going to help the medical field advance. It's not going to help anyone else out there that's suffering with any type of illness that's misunderstood. Not just PNES, but any other illness. Um, ultimately, education is key. And advocacy, and I I don't know how yet, but at some point I, I do want to get involved in something that's, that's going to help advocate for, for these types of seizures and educating the medical field out there because it's, it really is hard to, to feel like you're dealing with something it's so physically real. It's, you feel it in your body, it's painful, it is tiring, it's so real. And to be told time and time again that it's not real, that you're faking it, that you're stressed, that... I don't know. I don't even know. But it's got to change. And I do believe that at some point, and excuse me. I do believe that at some point in time, it will change. Um, but staying angry is not going to change anything. So, that's all I have to say. And I release all my anger that I've had for the past year right now.